Okay, so this is a brief tutorial about the abdominal viscera. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. So first, we have got this esophagus. So esophagus is a tubeless structure that pierces the diaphragm slightly left to the midline after a short course of about 0.5 inch. It then enters the structure we call the stomach on the right side. So stomach is this dilated part of the alimentary canal between the esophagus and the small intestine. So this organ occupies left upper quadrant of the epigastric and the umbilical region. Much of it lies under the cover of the ribs. Its long axis passes downwards and forward to the right and the backward and slightly upward of the stomach. After stomach, we've got the small intestine that's divided into three parts. We've got the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. So let's talk about the duodenum first. So it's a part of a small intestine that is deeply placed on the posterior abdominal wall. It's a kind of a C-shaped tube and it's situated in the epigastric and the umbilical region. So duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, it extends from the stomach and joins the second part of the small intestine they call the jejunum. So let's talk a bit about the jejunum and the last part of the small intestine, the ileum. So they both together measure about 20 feet long. So basically the upper two-fifth of the lamp makes up the jejunum. The jejunum begins at the duodenal junction and the ileum it ends at the ileocecal junction. The coils of the jejunum occupies the upper left part of the abdominal cavity. And if we talk about the ileum, so it tends to occupy the lower right part of the abdominal cavity as well as the pelvic cavity. So after the small intestine, we've got this large intestine. So large intestine is divided into the appendix, the cecum, ascending colon, the transverse colon, descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and then we've got this rectum and the anal canal. So let's talk about these structures in detail. So first we've got this cecum. The cecum is a blind-ended sac which projects downwards in the right iliac region below the ileocecal junction. Just after cecum, we've got this warm shaped tube which arises from its medial side, the appendix. Then we've got this ascending colon. The ascending colon, it ascends upward from the cecum to inferior surface of the right lobe of the liver and it occupies the right lower and upper quadrants. On reaching the liver, it bends to the left, forming a right colic flexure. Just after ascending colon, then we've got this transverse colon, that's the fourth part of the large intestine. So the transverse colon, it crosses the abdomen and the umbilical region from the right colic flexure to the left colic flexure to become the descending colon. And the descending colon then descends from the left colic flexure to the pelvis below and it occupies the left upper and lower quadrant. After the descending colon, we've got this sigmoid colon that's the most distal part of the large intestine. So it begins at the pelvic inlet where it's continuation of the descending colon. It hangs into the pelvic cavity in form of a loop and then it joins the rectum in front of the sacrum. So rectum is the last part of the large intestine which occupies the posterior part of the pelvic cavity. It then continues above the sigmoid colon and descends in front of the sacrum to leave the pelvis by the piercing the pelvic floor and then becomes continuous with the anal canal in the perineum.